sit back and relax. I think I can get a pretty good level if you just... Okay. Testing one. That's good. That's good. You all right? Um, do you remember much about writing any individual song that say something like Surf and Safari? No, I don't. I, I just uh, remember that <clears throat> all of a sudden, um, like, from nowhere, I just, be I was in the Beach Boys, you know? And I don't remember how it started. It was so slow to start, I mean, it started so slow that, like, I, I, I don't even remember writing that song. I think Mike Love handled most of that song. He, he handled most of it, but um, there, there was parts of it that I helped him, I don't know. Was, we had a, a weird thing where uh, we would start something and we wouldn't finish it, and then we'd go to another tune. You know, that happened with Surfer Girl, where I would start into Surfer Girl, and then I'd go into another tune because I'd, I couldn't, I can't stick, in other words, I can't stick in one song, I just have to keep going from song to song. Seems to be my problem. Did you, uh, did, you guys were, uh, you always sung together, wasn't that it? You'd sit around in the bedroom and harmonize? Yeah, we, we used to do, sing Come Down, Come Down from Your Ivory Tower, it was our, our favorite song. Carl Dennis and I used to do that as brothers, and uh, in a bedroom with three beds really close to each other, and we'd sing that song for years, and I think... Something must have happened that uh, he set up a harmonic vibration because we really sounded great in our bedroom, you know? And then later on in the Beach Boys, you know? So I believe it really uh, helped us to get going that way, our practicing in the bedroom, you know? Were you, uh, were you into surfing yourself? Um, no, I never could surf. Uh, I always had trouble. One time I did try to surf, I got banged in the head. I got my, I, uh, the board hit my side of my head and I really got scared. And I ran away from uh, surfing itself. I mean, uh, actually getting on, you know, into that sport of it really hurt me, you know. So I, I uh, took up um, music. My brother surfs great, you know. He's great. I just went into music. I took up some music, you know. Picked up on some music, and I, so far I have stuck in music. I cannot get out of music, it seems. I love it, you know. I really do love music. Do you, uh, what, what appeals to you about, about doing well, the only thing that appealed to me was that so many people were doing it, you know, and I, I, I didn't know uh, what it was until I actually went down to the beach to, to check it, but uh, it, it, it appealed so much to think that there, that, that there are uh, so many people doing the same thing at once, you know, that uh, it just really appealed. It was, a, it was like a great craze. And I think surfing helped to pull it together, helped to pull people together. I really believe that it did. Because I think it spread. I think the feeling of surfers hanging out together spread all over the land from the sea, you know. And I, th I think that, uh, uh, I really do believe that, 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 that it inspired me to write about society, you know. Because when I saw that, it made me want to write about people, you know. It really did. What, uh, what about, I mean... You, you write a lot about the water. Do you have any particular thing about the water? Uh, well, uh, I used to get, I used, I almost drowned once in the beach. And, uh, I remember that it's just the experience of, of getting that water in my nose and it up through my throat scared me so that I think it left an imprint to write about water, I, you know, uh, it left a thing in me to, to write a little tune, to write a little tune about water. I remember, um, we did a song called Cool Cool Water, which might have, well, it wasn't about my drowning, I know, but it was, uh, it did have an effect of water, and I remember I love water. I was very water conscious for many years, I don't know why. Um, do you remember much about uh, uh, the, the uh, car song? And why those happen? Those happen because I'll tell you why. Because we we we, we already had proven a, a, a theory that you can you can you can um, create a craze and that it would spread. We we proved that theory, so we figured that we could prove that same theory with another craze with cars. So we went ahead and proved it, you know, and it works. And I tell you, it works because I mean, any craze like for okay, it started with my brother Dennis again. I mean, he. He said, look, cars are going to be big, and let's write about cars now, and hot rods, you know, and hot rods, and so we got into that. But any craze you do go after, it, it works. It really does work, you know. If you choose the right craze, it, it really actually works. Craze music. 
yeah, uh, anything that where the subject is heavily, you know, where it's, where the subject, you really uh, dwell on the subject, you know, like, I live surfing, you know, guys who just do nothing but surf or drive cars, it's, it's, uh, it works on those kind of crazes where there's something that's repeatedly done a lot. Uh, I think, well, that's far, I don't know. Do you remember the song like 409 or Little Deuce 2? Yeah, I do, yes. Do you remember doing those songs? Yes, I do. I remember that. I, I remember uh, how it felt when we first went into 409, when we first did that with that car. I just the feeling was so exhilarating. And running, uh, she's real fine, my, you know? Just uh, can't uh, explain it. It's just exhilaration, you know? The feeling. And. Uh, uh, Little Deuce Coop, and what was that other car song? Car Crazy Cutie, wait a minute. Oh, I just... Pardon? Drag City, Jan. Yeah. <laughs> that was uh, Jan and Dean, Jan Berry and Dean Torrance. We worked with them uh, on several records. We helped them on uh, several of their top ten records. And uh, they really made it well on the car craze thing. They really did get going. And also the surf thing, too. And, uh, yeah. It you wrote really their first, didn't you write the first, their first surfing hit with the, um, was it, um, ooh, what was that song? Surf City, I think. Surf City. I believe that was the, one of the songs that, 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 that really made it for him. Uh, he, he started with a riff, Two Girls for Every Boy, and I, I picked up on that. I said, Jan, you have a smash with that. You've got to go in that studio and do that. And he says, well, help me finish this song. So we we finished the song in a couple of days, and we went in, and, and, and he just put that together so quick and got a top ten from it. Remember Fun, Fun, Fun? Fun, Fun, Fun. Wait a minute. Daddy took the away. Oh, yeah. That, that, uh, wait a minute, Fun, Fun, Fun. We wrote, we did that while we were in Australia, and, uh, when we got back into the States, when we finally got back to the States, I remember that tune that, that somebody up in Frisco called down and they said, Hey, you guys, do you know that Fun, Fun, Fun's going to be a top ten record? And we didn't even know that Capitol had released the damn thing. We recorded it, for, I think, in Australia and sent it to uh, America. We got back and they tell us that, that it was making top ten, that it made a top ten record. It's really weird. We were on tour in Australia, down, down in Australia for 30 days. And I believe this was in 1964 that this happened. But that song, I do remember it. I really do. Remember recording it? Remember, was there a story behind doing it? Uh... Well, <clears throat> no. The, there, oh, yes, there was. Wait a minute. We, oh, there was a chick. There was a chick that Mike knew that had a T-bird, you know. This chick, and she had this T-bird, you know. And like, I remember Mike used to used to drive her T-bird for her, and I remember how he used to just talk about her T-bird. And all of a sudden, he, I think it inspired him to write a, to a song about her T-bird. Come to think of it, and uh, the title "Fun, Fun, Fun" was thought of by my father. My father, before he died, thought of that song "Fun, Fun, Fun" with the title, and so we used it. Did, you, did your father? Uh help you a lot with the, your writing? Yeah, he laid a few uh, inspirations on me. He really did. He uh, he got me uh, going. Uh, he actually, on in my room, for instance, he suggested starting with one voice and then building to two and to three. He, he just had, he did a lot of suggestion in production that suggested a style, a vocal group style, which we had, no one really knows about. We'd never said that, but he kind of uh, formulated our style with us. You know, if we do have a style, and uh, it's really true, though he did. And uh, so what finally happened was uh, we 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 began making records like the ones before because it, the style proved to go. You know, so that's what finally happened. You know. Do you remember anything about recording Good Vibrations? Uh, no, I don't. I just I just I vaguely remember I vaguely remember that song um, starting to like. It seemed like that we went to we went to six studios yeah, as a matter of fact we went to six studios to get that song um one studio we did the first part of the track the next studio we did the cello section part and then the next sections and then we put spliced all the different pieces together 
finally we had we we had one uh we had one track and then we did the, the whole vocal the whole vocal was done at columbia the whole vocal but the track was done in six different studios but the whole vocal was done at columbia did you have a, a hero of the recording business or was there some producer or some musician that you really what were you into as a kid listening to music uh probably phil phil yeah if if you know for a hero um someone who 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 could 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 kind of cl cl clear up some problems as far as what you know records used to be and 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 cleared up a few problems i think in rock and roll for us you know as far as uh uh you know which which way we were going to go i think we got it got cleared up you know in some of the records that, hold on <laughs> Um, <clears throat> do you remember there was another great song that we wanted to use as a real important thing, California Girls? That I I I I, I vaguely remember what what it felt like. I know the melody. Come on in, Bill. The melody seemed to work. The uh, California Girls didn't. Hi, right, Bill. Come on in. That's uh. John Gibson. John Gibson. Gibson Gibson's Songbird. No, no. And it really started to get heavy, you know, like, you know what I mean? The, like the whole trip was, everyone was sweating how heavy was it going to get. And I think it's a funny trip. Myself, I personally think it's all, it's all very funny because, you know, we're, wow, it's going to get heavy, you know. <laughs> you know, any, any little thing, you know, like when California girls, when, uh, when that happened, <coughs> I just remember that it felt so fucking heavy, you know, that it just felt like I said, ah, this one I know we're gonna get. This one's gonna be top ten. I could feel it, you know. It just felt too. It felt too fucking well good, you know, or too. It felt too right, and I knew it was gonna get us across, from you know, for, to somewhere, you know, and it did, and it really did, man. Well, be true to your school. <laughs> oh. oh God. Oh shit. That one did. That one just was just a lyric thing, and I I think. We we blew it. We, we 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 the Beach Boys actually as a group blew the whole blew their career with that song because I think the message is is it's it's a ridiculous message. I think that when we were in high school, it, it, we were kind of hung up on the fact that wow you know you come from Hawthorne High so wow you gotta really get behind that you know but but yet now that I think of it, uh, it's it's a it's a silly mess you know I mean we got ourselves in a mess really. With a lot of our songs, because it's it's <sighs> shit, man. I don't take it serious. Let's put it that way. I don't take it serious, you know. And I think it's I think it's funny myself. I so. yeah. I feel, I think there's a that's a funniness thing, you know, to it. And uh, like I don't know. That's what I feel. You know. Um, is there? A, do you have a plan to? Uh... Oh. <laughs> Let any of that stuff out of, uh, what did you think of? Uh, if, depending on what song you mean, you know. Oh, the, like, um, out of the Smile album. Oh, you mean as singles? Yeah. I don't know what you mean. Were there some of those things that you had, uh, had changed from the, uh, the studio? At least I had heard. What's that? Wait, wait a minute. From the, from the Smile album? Oh, oh, from this, that's right, I, I, the, the Smile album, um, <clears throat> we were so stoned at that time that, well, I mean, we were really high, we felt really stoned, we were smoking that dumb grass, you know, grass, plus they mixed this black ganji stuff in it to give it an extra boost, you know, and we got stoned, and, uh, we did a kind of a freaky album, uh, we just, we, we just seemed like, uh, we're stoned all the way through the, uh, that album, and it was a real kind of hippie-oriented type album, you know? And then we got out of the grass and back into, you know, normal recording. <laughs> like, it's like getting through the thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's a place, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. There's a place there. <laughs> well, you, you can come in a better, on it better than that. The reggae uh, strut. hot <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember much about uh, 
you know, what you thought was going on when people were rioting on the strip and there was the birds was happening and all, all that uh, like protest music? I felt <clears throat> uh, paranoid. I, I have for a long time. I've carried around a little paranoia thing about not at times knowing what was happening and then and then at times seeing so much happening that I, I felt like I didn't have a chance to survive the trip, you know, due to the so much acid rock that that there was. It was hard, you know, because, you know, by the time you start to worry about what's happening, you get, you just, all of a sudden you give in to it, you know? You just figure, oh, God, man. You know, too much happening. I, I gotta, gotta join in and, and, and do a thing. But, uh, uh, the strip, like, okay, the birds. I know Roger McGlynn. I, I mean, like, Jesus, he, he's, he's not, he's a, he's a rather funny guy. He's a rather funny guy, you know? I mean, I, I talked to him at his house and he, uh, he, uh, like, has some stuff. He has some stuff at his house that just, you know, some secret stuff that no one knows about. It's just, he has a laser beam, you know. I mean, it's it's just weird. There's this just stuff he has, you know, that he keeps. And uh, we worked together on some songs that we might be doing in the future. We never completed. And uh, it's an I have an unfinished project with Roger that we started, and I still feel that he's going to enter into it, you know, heavily, you know. And uh, I just really respect Roger McGuinn because I feel that he, you know, I feel he's he he has something about him that, you know, just he's he's sort of a where it's at type of a thing, you know. And he really is, you know. He he's where it's at, <laughs> and Roger McGuinn, you know, sort of close to where it's at. <laughs> I said I talked to I talked to him the other day too. Yeah. Said yeah. <laughs> did you, uh, what did you think of uh, California Saga? Uh, on the last album, the one that's got the water, water, did you <sighs> That was just a, um, a, uh, a simple song that, that we did in Holland. And, and, uh, Al Jardine put that together with, uh, with Michael. And, and, uh, he put that together. I think it only took him two weeks. As a matter of fact, it took him two, two weeks to get that one together. And uh, while we were working on this other segment of the album, he was off doing that. And uh, he, he he really did. He really. Why did Why did you guys go to Holland? Well, we, <clears throat> well, uh, somebody in the group. Uh, uh, read up read about Holland or something and uh, wanted us all to see it said it was supposed to be a special country so we uh, we uh, we went over there for five months for five months you know and uh, we liked it so much there that we, we, we extended it you know we were only gonna stay there a month and then all of a sudden we extended it because we liked it so much you know that uh that we dug it, so we uh, gave ourselves an extension to stay for a while, you know, and uh, uh, now we really got to work. I mean, we didn't fool around. We had to work night and day, and then we'd throw away something, and we someone would split from, go to would go to London, and we wouldn't know where someone would be. But after five months, we got an album together, and came back, you know. But it was fun. Oh, it was very fun, you know. It's completely different, though. I mean, it did yeah, uh, it had a diff. Uh, yeah, we we started realizing that uh, after we'd gotten there, that was really kind of s- weird for us, you know. I mean, tulips instead of the beach, right? Really? <laughs> we we just said, hey, let's get down to the studio and see about getting some work done, you know. And and uh, we'd go down there, and work for, we'd work for fifteen minutes, you know. And then we'd we'd wrap up. We'd wait for another th- week. We'd go back in and work for two days, you know, it was like, um, we didn't really have, a, we were sporadic, you know, we just, God, it was rough, really rough, you know, <laughs> it was rougher than heck, you know. Do, what did you, uh, do you remember why uh, student revolution time was done, student demonstration time? No, I never could not know why, just, uh, 
there was um, some uh, trouble in college, I think. Trouble in, around the United States or whatever. And that tune, as a matter of fact, Lieber and Stoller, now, I'm not sure, but didn't Lieber and Stoller, like, work on a song Trouble in cell block called Cell Block Number 9 or something? Weren't they working on that? It's probably where, where the, it was inspired, I think. Lieber, Lieber and Stoller inspired Trip. Or, I don't know. Were you much into Lieber and Stoller? Did you like their stuff? Uh, not until someone turned me on to them. I, I, I didn't know a thing about Lieber and Stoller until uh, somewhere in the 60s. You know, I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't know nothing, you know. I, I just didn't know, you know. And then someone said Lieber and Stoller to me, you know. I, was a big favor here. Yes. But Lieber and Stoller, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Lieber Stoller are a big thrill, you know, because, see, back in the days when, uh, well, when they first started, they, uh, well, Lieber Stoller more or less knew where to go with it, you know, before I think hardly anyone did, as far as that goes, you know. So, uh, they're just a big thrill. I mean, really, you know, no shit. What do you, uh, you've always lived in California. What, what, and you went away to Holland for a little while, but you came back. Why did you come back? Why do you like it so much? I love it here because, uh, uh, because all of a sudden I, I, all of a sudden I've got my eyes open now to so much, you know. Whereas before they were closed, you know, it was like, it seemed like, uh, in time, you know, to, over the years, you know, you, you get a, you get convinced that that you're fucked up more or less. You're convinced, ah, uh, can't make it, can't this, you know. All of a sudden, something will happen. It'll click. One thing, one little thing will happen, and bam, there it goes, you know? It, that, and I'm, I look for that, you know, because I feel that could, could help me, you know? Or there's a little something that'll always happen that might at least, you know, save it or, uh, or get, get me going, you know? You find that here? Yeah, I, I find that, that it could happen, you know? I do. You see, keep sort of a, a, a daily routine. You, you like this, too. To uh, spend a day or so up and then sleep for a while. Right? Yeah, I'll, I'll go 24 hours and then sleep two days. You know? <laughs> I don't know. Or, I don't know. You go out and run around much? Or you... No, I, I, uh, I usually stick pretty close to home, you know? But, but, uh, like maybe with Bill, like we might hop and get in his car and, and, going out to a record company and and uh, take care of a little business for for a day you know but uh, shit I don't know I, I, I'm a believer that you take care of business when you do it I don't believe you fool, fool around I don't believe in fooling around as far as that goes uh, that you just take care of the job you know you, you, you take care of business when you do it and uh, that's just all I believe, you know. <laughs> you just get the job done when you do it, not, not, not when you don't, you know. Okay, uh, I'm gonna wrap this up so you can uh, go and take business with Bill. Uh, go ahead. Were you into TM much, or was that just Mike? Mike, I'm not into that. Uh, I'm not into uh, to transcendental meditation. I'm not. I don't know what it is. I don't even. Uh, I. There's a, just a, it's some kind of thing, system that uh, supposedly brings you peace, but I'm not convinced that you can get peace from that, you know, from meditation. Yeah, I, I think you can, you know. I don't know. I think you could if you, if, if you really wanted, you know. When you, when you, when you, when you sit down right, you start looking for a feeling, what, what do you go for? Uh... Like you mentioned 409, you love that feeling, and it's still very feeling. Yeah, that, you mean that, 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 uh, that first feeling, yeah, I, I think I do. I look for that first inspiration, you know, that, that could come along. Right? Catch a wave. It does, you know, it does.
What songs do you like? Like of, of of the of the guys. What songs do you like of the guys? The first one that really made an impression. The very first one was Catch a Wave. And I've never been near a wave. <laughs> said, Jesus, I, I know what that feels like. You really? And uh, I like all the hot I like all the hot rugs because they got a feeling of speed, you know, and power and yeah. and explosion. Yeah, they and, do. Uh, I love uh, the one, I think it's on Holland, the I'm a Leaf in the Wind. Uh-oh. Till I die. Till I die. Love till I die. Ah, uh, I love it. Yeah, I, it, I like it. It feels just right. It feels right, you know. And just that change when it, when it comes to these things I'll be... Yeah, these just... Yeah. I, that's a, that one lasts for a long time. It, um... I like Surfer Girl, I mean, as far as just a song, you know. That's one of my favorites, you know. As far as just being involved in, in, in a song, I like that song. I do. What, what got you back? I don't know. I just, uh, I like it. It, it, it's, it's feels, uh, it feels uh, more like, uh, I don't know. It feels like it, you know. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's a ballad, first of all, you know. And I'm used to a lot of rock, and, and I like ballads, and uh, I do like a ballad, you know. A slow, I like a slow ballad, you know. I really do. Yeah, that in my room. Oh, that yeah. <sighs> it has a good feel about solitude. <laughs> what else do you like? I mean... California Girl. Um, do you like, uh, what, what do you like, like, um, from Lieber Stoller? What do you like from them? I like the first one, Black Leather Jacket. <laughs> and I like, uh, you know, songs like Spanish Harlem. And... Was, was, was one of the Stoller, Lieber Stoller part of that song? Yeah, they wrote it with Phil. Oh, oh. Oh, that's that's right. They did a lot of Elvis songs, didn't they? Yeah, they did a lot of Elvis songs. Why? Why did they? Was it they were they wrote on assignment? They say, somebody say there's an Elvis movie coming up. Yeah, but I mean, why would they write for Elvis? They wanted to have this. They huh. were writers at the time. And they were doing that. Yeah. They didn't make a lot of money and they didn't sell. They weren't always the best songs, though. They were just, a lot of those things they did for Elvis. Too. Not as good as... Well, why didn't they do them? Why didn't Lieber Stoller do their, record their own songs themselves? I don't know that... Uh, Jerry, I've seen some pictures of Jerry rehearsing groups. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, and apparently he's really into singing. But he never, they never recorded it. No? Why? It's New York, though. It's Broadway. And they probably saw that as going in the studio and jerking off or something. They were into the Probably like Jimmy Webb, you know, he was lighter. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Um, I love Heroes and Villains. That's what I'm all about. That one's easy. That that one, uh, you know, that just, uh, that one just lasts for two minutes. Yeah. That's it. Uh, Good vibration. That. That one goes by. That that just you know, like uh, three minutes, three thirty-five, I think. What? You, did, you 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 can tell what you like by how long it lasts. Yeah, I can I can get a. a <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a way. <laughs> yeah, I like short records though. I actually really do. You know, like one fifty.